Hey y'all, welcome back. Uh, as always, we want to thank you for taking some time with us today, and, and we don't want to waste that time. Um, our, our primary scripture today is going to be Romans 1, 1, is what we're going to be talking about. We're going to be moving around a little bit, but, uh, you know, I recently was talking to a friend, and we got to talking about Romans 1, chapter, chapter 1, verse 1. And, you know, it simply says, Paul, bondservant of Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle, separated to the gospel of God. And... It's one of those things that I've I've preached, you know, out of Romans, more than probably any other book. We've we've taught it, we've talked about it, but I've never really stopped and thought about what it means to be separated to the gospel of God. I've never slowed down and actually considered. And the Lord wouldn't wouldn't let up on me about this. He kept kept bringing it to my mind. I mean, what does it look like to truly be separated to the gospel of God? To truly set ourselves apart for his purposes, for his will, for, for the life that he has for us. And, you know, it's the idea of being separated from, from the world, from our old life, is kind of a scary thing. It's something that it's, it's not familiar to us. It's not something that a lot of us are willing to, to truly submit to. But if we want to walk with the Lord, we have to be willing to submit and surrender our lives to, to his will we have to be willing to walk where he wants us to walk and to do what he wants us to do and you know it comes down to you know who is the lord of our life is jesus the lord of our life if he is then the word says that we're to walk like he walked that we're to live like he lived we're to try to be as holy and as righteous and obedient to the word as as we possibly can you know jesus jesus in john 17 when he was praying for his disciples, verses 15 through 18, he says, I don't pray that you should take them out of the world, but that you keep them from the evil one. They are not of the world, just as I'm not of the world. Sanctify them by your truth. Your word is truth. So the word of God is the truth by which we must live our lives. It is what separates us. It's what sanctifies us from the unbelievers, from the, the world apart from God. And the world is, is one of the main things that we have to work on sanctifying ourselves from. You know, the world, like we said, is anything that, that is not of God. And God is very, very serious about us coming out from among unbelievers. All through Scripture, we read about separation. And that's not something we like to talk about. In the culture that we live in, it's this culture of inclusivity. And it's this culture of everybody, you know, getting along and everybody being tolerant and loving and kind. And we are to be loving, we are to be kind, and we are to be peaceful with everyone whom we can be peaceful with, but not at the risk, not at the cost of compromising what the Word of God says. For once we lay down the Word and we no longer stand on what it says, it no longer sanctifies us. We no longer live by it. And, and we become just like the unsaved world. So Romans 12, 1 and 2 are, are super familiar scriptures for most of us. And it says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. It's verse, verse 1. When we talk about, you know, laying down our lives, laying down our bodies as living sacrifices, holy and acceptable to God, you know, we, we aren't all called to be martyrs. It's not what this is talking about. This is talking about laying down our lives as in laying down our abilities, our talents, our skills, our money, whatever the Lord requires of us, willingly laying it down, bringing it to the altar and, and placing it out before the Lord and giving it to Him. And, you know, that is our reasonable service, that, that what God's blessed us with, that we offer back to Him, that we use to glorify Him, that we use it to bring glory to Him and to honor Him and to please Him. Because we know that all good things come from Him. So for us to withhold anything from him is utterly sinful. Verse 2 says, And do not be conformed to this world. Do not be conformed to the image of this world. Don't be conformed to the way they talk, the way they think, the way they behave. Don't be like them. Okay, They follow a different God. They follow the God of this world, who is Satan. The Bible calls him the prince of the power of the air. He's the one that rules this world that we currently live in, the, the, the society and the culture apart from God, which again is the definition of the world. 
but be transformed. Don't be conformed to the world, but be transformed. Be made new by the renewing of your mind. That you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. We have to get our minds set on Jesus. We have to get our minds deep into the Word and get the Word deep into our mind. We have to be willing to obey what we read, to be, as it says in James, to be a doer, not only a hearer of the Word, to apply it to our lives, to live it, to walk it, to, to, to endure in it and to the end. You know, as we look at these scriptures, we look at the world as, as an enemy. And the world is our enemy. The people of the world aren't. Okay? We, we are to be loving. I'm not saying to go hide somewhere. We are to take the love of Christ to the whole world. It's our calling as, as followers of Jesus to preach the gospel to every creature, to everyone who will, will stop and listen. And even if they're walking away, their ears are still open. We preach to them. We tell them how much God loves them, how much he wants to save them, how he wants to deliver them from their sin and what he's done for us. That while we were still dead on our trespasses, he loved us so much that he died for us with the hope that in the future that we would accept him, that we would love him, that we would walk with him that we would honor him. And the, the next thing that we need to be worrying about sanctifying ourselves from, we kind of touched on it, I think, already, is, is that old man, right? That, that life of sin that we lived prior to salvation. We have to get that junk out of our lives. We've got to get sometimes people out of our lives, places, situations. You know, we, we can read in Galatians and in Colossians, there's lists of characteristics of the old man, there's lists and characteristics of, of those who walk after the flesh. In Galatians 5.19, you know, before we get to that, let me say this. The Word tells us plainly that we can't do anything in the flesh to please God. If we're not walking in the Spirit, if we're not walking after Jesus, if we're not seeking Him with our whole hearts, if we're not applying ourselves, all of ourselves, to seeking Him, to living for Him, we can't please Him. Okay, We are to be nothing more than instruments of His righteousness, instruments of His will. That's the greatest thing we can hope for. That's the greatest calling that we can have is to just serve the King. So we go on here in Galatians 5, 19 through 21. It says, Now the works of the flesh are evident. Okay, The flesh, remember, doesn't obey God. It never has and it never will is what Scripture says. But the flesh, the works of the flesh are adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lewdness, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, contentions, jealousies, outbursts of wrath, slander, selfish ambitions, dissensions, heresies, envy, murder, drunkenness, revelries, and the like of which I tell you beforehand, just as I've told you in times past, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. You can't take your sin into the presence of God. God couldn't even look at Jesus on the cross because he was covered in our sin. Okay. He had taken our sins upon himself, and God had to look away from his only beloved son because of our sin. And we think that we can bring our sin into his presence in the church. We think we can come in to his, his place, his holy place, and flaunt our sin. We're mistaken. We're sadly, sorely mistaken. Colossians 3, 5-7 says, If we're put to death, your members which are on the earth, the parts of you that are still fleshly, the parts of you that are still carnal, do everything you can to, to stomp them into the ground, to put them to death. That old man with his old ways, you don't want that because you've been given a new life. You've been you've made, been made a new creation in Christ Jesus. That bondage that we carried around from our habits and our addictions and our failures and our sins of the past, all that stuff's gone. Jesus says, leave it there. He says, you have a new life. You've been made clean. You've been made blameless. Now, walk that way. Stay that way. Stay pure. Stay undefiled. Stay righteous in your conduct. He's given us the ability to be righteous in Him. He's called us to be holy. If we weren't able and capable through Him, He wouldn't have given us the command to do it. So, he goes on and he says, these, these things that we're talking about here include fornication, uncleanness, passion, evil desires, and covetousness, which is idolatry. Because of these things, 
because of the practice of sin, sinful lifestyles, practicing, living in sin, because of these things, the wrath of God is coming upon the sons of disobedience. Those children of the devil who refuse to accept Jesus, who want to walk in the ways of the world, who want to walk to please their flesh, who want to live to please themselves, but give no thought to their Heavenly Father, to the one who loves them more than anyone else. And he ends it, he says, in which you yourselves once walked when you lived in them. We've all been the people that we're talking about here. We've all been children of disobedience. We've all been the sinner. And the only difference between us and them is we're still sinners. But thank God we're sinners saved by grace. And you know, this, this this message isn't meant to condemn anybody. This message is meant to wake some people up. You know, to, to not be so comfortable in your sin and to recognize that if you call yourself a child of God, you're called to live a holy life. You're called to live a sanctified and a faithful life. And, you know, it's not impossible. It's impossible for us in our flesh. But in the Spirit with, with God, nothing's impossible. All we have to do is turn to Him. Ask Him to be the Lord of our life. Ask Him to save us and to deliver us, to justify us, to sanctify us, to be our God, to be our Father, to trust in Him. And He'll take care of the details. We just have to show up and be willing. You know, we, we love to pray with you. We love to pray for you. If there's anything we can do to help you in your walk, if there's anything we can do to encourage you, let us know. You can get with us on Facebook, Forum of Ministries, WV. You know, we're all around. Reach out to us. We pray that these, these videos are a blessing to you. If they are, we pray you would subscribe to the channel. We pray that you would like, that you would comment, that you would share, that we can get the word out to as many people as possible while the Lord still tarries. Till next time, God bless you.